Good morning everyone, my name is Andy and I'm the Partner Manager for Bytes. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. We'll be looking at Microsoft 365 and the collaboration elements within it. This is the second webinar in our series on Microsoft 365, having previously covered security. Don't worry if you missed that particular webinar, it's still available on the Bytes YouTube page. Uh, also, you can request a link from your account manager. Alternatively, um, we have an upcoming workshop on the 9th of March at the NED Hotel in London. So if you go to the Bytes events page, you can register for that as well. Um, so on to today's webinar, which will be presented uh, by James from CPS. Now, CPS are a multi-Microsoft uh, Gold accredited partner, uh, particularly relevant to today. Uh, they hold gold status for uh, collaboration and content. Uh, a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, during the webinar, you are muted, but you can submit questions at any time via the questions box on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, there is a question answer session at the end um, to answer all submitted questions. Uh, the webinar recording will be made available and emailed to you. Um, and finally, if you can please uh, complete the critique form at the end uh, where you can request a callback um, from one of our specialists at Bytes. OK, I'll now hand you over to James. OK, okay. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is James Head. I'm uh, uh, head of technical pre-sales at uh, CPS and I'd like to run through uh, an overview of uh, collaboration in Office 365 but before I uh, before I do that I just want to um, <clears throat> sorry I just want to uh, give a quick uh, um, uh, agenda of what we're uh, looking at today so um, I want to do a quick overview of uh, Microsoft 365 and where the collaboration pieces sit within it uh, and then have a look at uh, some of the tools within Office 365, moving out to uh, communication via Yammer, uh, and then to Teams, and then lastly to look at how to launch Teams successfully within your organization. Uh, and once we've done that, we'll have uh, um, an overview of some of the licensing uh, options around this. Okay, so first off, just to set the scene a little bit for where, where we are. So, um, Microsoft 365 uh, is um, a collection of offerings from Microsoft which incorporates Office 365, Enterprise Mobility and Security, uh, and licensing for Windows 10 Enterprise. Um, so that's the overall sort of scene that we're working within. Um, <clears throat> Enterprise Mobility and Security gives us uh, some of the security aspects, uh, device management, uh, information protection, and that kind of thing. And then the Windows 10 Enterprise uh, gives us licensing for, for Windows 10 on the device. Um, and some of the uh, endpoint security aspects as well. But today I'll be focusing mainly on Office 365 uh, and the collaboration features within. So <clears throat> let's get started, shall we? So starting your day with Office 365. So I don't know about you, but I tend to start um, my day in Office 365 with uh, uh, the Outlook app on a mobile device. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that directly on a mobile device today, but I will simulate some of those things. So let's switch across to my demo. Okay, um, so this is the, effectively the front door for Office 365. Um, good evening, clearly my time zone is uh, not set correctly at the moment, but this is um, good morning, it should be saying, and this is uh, just an overview of what we have uh, in Office 365. Before we um, dive too deeply into that, I'm just gonna have, quickly have a look at um, my uh, email, which is, I think, what most people would start to do uh, when they start their day. And if I look through down through my email, I can see I've got a new email from Nesta. Um, nothing particularly earth shattering here, you might think. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further, and I can see I've got an email from Patty, who's my CEO. But I can also see that email has been decorated slightly differently. Um, it's been given uh, a yellow background there, and it and she's saying Patty is saying she needs the plans for the Mark 8 uh, super fast and marked it as urgent. If I click on that, you see I get a notice here to say, you don't often get email from pattyf at gmail.com. Um, and that email address appears to be similar to somebody within my organization. So this is actually a phishing uh, attack, a social engineering attack that's coming on here. And Office 365 is, is smart enough, using the artificial intelligence behind it, is smart enough to, um, to, to protect me from doing something a bit silly. Um, what else have we got here? So we, we've also got focused inbox. So um, 
basically what this is doing is it's uh, learning over time the types of emails that I need to respond to uh, and also conversely the types of emails that are um, maybe less important and don't need an immediate response. So I've got my focused inbox here but if I flip across to my uh, other inbox you'll see I've got emails um, landing here which are less important to me. Um, you know things like uh, thank you emails, uh, notification emails, uh, subscriptions, that kind of stuff. So it's starting to um, it's, <clears throat> it's it's starting to reduce the amount of noise and the amount of uh, extra emails in my inbox that are that are not important to me. Um, but if I see a particular email that is important, um, I can right click on that and click on always move to focused inbox and that's going to learn then that that type of email or emails from that uh, account should always go into my focused inbox. Okay, um, jumping back to the front door. Um, so I just want to give a quick overview of some of the uh, applications that uh, are available as part of Office 365. Um, this list is growing uh, exponentially actually uh, uh, over time. So we're seeing uh, lots of new uh, innovation in the space. But um, the first thing you see up at the top is, is a, a summarized list of uh, applications that I have access to. Um, I can also click on the menu up at the top here and then click on all apps and I get a, a scrollable list of all of the apps that I have access to. Uh, and you'll see down in here we have things like Planner, Power Apps, um, Yammer and Teams. And then if I just come back to the portal screen again, um, just scrolling down here, you'll see I've got uh, some documents that are useful to me or interesting to me. So I've got recent documents that I've worked on. Um, I've got documents that I can see that Lee, uh, one of my colleagues has worked on. I've got items that have been pinned and I haven't actually pinned anything yet. I've got documents that have been shared with me. Um, so these are documents that maybe have been presented on a Skype for Business meeting or have been emailed to me or that kind of thing. And this is basically using the Office Graph. It's, it's presenting a synopsis of those emails that uh, have been shared with me. And there's also the Discover tab where uh, I can find other uh, documents that are trending around me within the organization. Okay. So very quick uh, overview of uh, some of the things that we get in Office 365. and what I want to do now is jump back to my slides. There we go. So where, where to start a conversation? So um, as many people know, there are multiple uh, ways in which you can have a conversation with, within Office 365, uh, not least of which Outlook that we're probably all familiar with uh, and Skype for Business. Um, but there are two sort of newer entrants to that field as well. So there's uh, Microsoft Teams uh, and Yammer. And this slide really starts to position where uh, teams and Yammer sit within uh, that sphere of conversation. So we have um, Teams, Microsoft Teams for really people that you're working closely with on a day to day. So potentially uh, project um, team members, things like that. Um, that. Those are the people that are sort of closest to you in your in your work ne network, if you like. And then on the other side, on the right hand side, we've got Yammer uh, and, and, and Yammer really gives you that broad communication across uh, the organization. So you can start to um, discuss things in effectively communities of practice uh, or in just general interest groups uh, and you can start to collaborate with people uh, that way. Uh, and of course, there's still um, Outlook and there's still email. So um, many people are very familiar with, uh, with email and you can still obviously have communication uh, via email. But we're going to look in, in more depth at, uh, at the top two of those uh, items today. So we're going to start off with Yammer and then we're going to move to Teams. So broad, broad group communication with Yammer. Let's have a look at Yammer. So uh, I'm just going to go into uh, the Office 365 menu and click on Yammer. And this is going to jump me straight into uh, the uh, Yammer portal and I'm presented with uh, uh, basically three columns of information here. So on the left hand side I have um, my list of groups that I'm uh, a member of or that I'm following. Uh, in the middle I have the, the latest um, 
conversation from that group. And on the right, I have uh, a pane which gives me other uh, apps and, and access to other parts of Office 365. Um, so what can we see in our group? So I've got various groups within this fictitious organization uh, relating to different uh, interest groups or different areas of the business. Um, so we, you can see we have uh, a group for sales uh, and in there we have discussions about sales related topics. We've got uh, effectively a non-work group for quadcopter enthusiasts, and this is uh, uh, just a, a general uh, interest group. Uh, and we have other, particularly the all company group, and that, um, as the name suggests, can direct conversations at everybody within the organization. Okay, so let's start using some of this. I'm gonna jump into the quadcopter enthusiasts group. Uh, um, and I just want to <clears throat> show some of the things that can be shared uh, in the conversation here. So you can see Megan uh, has shared a photo that she's taken with her, with her quadcopter. If I scroll down a bit further, Lee has shared a video that he's taken with his quadcopter. Uh, and we've got uh, links to other resources on the internet and various other uh, discussions going on there. <clears throat> well, what I want to do is to start to share something with this group. So I can click into the box up at the top, share something with this group. And I can share a text update. I can start a poll with this group. I can praise people. And I can make announcements as well. So let's, um, so let's create an announcement. Um, so this one is, uh, we want to create an announcement for a Fabricam uh, opportunity. Uh, sales opportunity, there we go. And, and then in the body here, I'm gonna have, I have a fresh, oops, a fresh lead for the account team covering the east region there we go okay and so in order in order to post that i can click on the post button at the bottom there and that announcement will get posted into my uh, conversation there what else can we do well um we can actually start to share uh, documents within uh, these groups so we get a fully uh, immersive experience. So I'm going to move across to, um, to the HR group, uh, sorry, the sales group. There we go. And uh, I can see that uh, Miriam has shared uh, a PowerPoint deck there, so I can click on that. And what that does is it opens up the PowerPoint um, presentation within the browser, and it gives me an immersive experience here to uh, to view the slide deck so I can advance through the slide deck and see the various different slides within that. And alongside that, I can start to have a discussion about um, this slide deck here. So um, I can, I can in, in the chat window over on the right hand side here, um, I, can, uh, I can add some comments here. So adding, a, uh, adding case studies from Fabricam would help. Okay, well, hello. There we go. And <clears throat> I can then post that there. So this conversation is then in the context of uh, the slide deck and also in the context of that channel. So we can actually start to uh, have a meaningful conversation about uh, a PowerPoint deck that we're working on. Okay. So um, <clears throat> what else can we do within um, Yammer? So if I have a look over on the right hand side, I mentioned that this gives us access to other parts of Office 365. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that I can add members, I can create a file, I can see some group insights to see how much uh, interest is, is uh, that people have with this group. Uh, and I can also start to have a look at various different Office 365 re uh, resources that are related to the group. Um, so if I have a quick look at OneNote here, uh, this is going to open up OneNote and it's going to show me some of the uh, information that relates to that particular group. If I just jump, jump to the HR group and do the same, click on OneNote, um, 
there we go. I have some uh, content within OneNote. So this is a OneNote file that relates purely to that group within Yammer. And there can be various pages within that group as well. OK, so um, that's a quick highlight there of, uh, of Yammer within Office 365. I'm just going to jump back to my slides. And let's have a look at Teams and we'll start to understand potentially how Teams is different from Yammer. So if I jump back to my browser again, and I'm going to go back to the uh, Office 365 portal and then launch Teams. So Microsoft Teams is a relatively new entrant to uh, the Office 365 uh, suite. Let me try that again. Uh, and Teams uh, basically, as I said, gives that uh, that sort of close group communication with people that you uh, interact mostly with. Um, so what is Teams and, and, and what does it give us? Teams gives us a, a, a persisted chat uh, between groups of people uh, that are working on a similar thing. And it gives us effectively a front end to various other aspects of Office 365 as well. And it's broken down into effectively three columns again. So over on the left hand side, I have activity chat, Teams meetings. Uh, and if I was using the desktop client, I would have calls in there as well. In the middle, I have my favorites. So these are the various different uh, teams that I'm a member of. And underneath each team, uh, there are a number of sub channels for each team. And then on the right hand pane, I have the conversation and various other tabs that relate to that channel. So if I move into uh, one of my teams here, so I'm going to scroll down to the X1050 launch team uh, and then have a look uh, at the ellipsis there. So this allows me to um, start to manage the team. And in here, I can see a list of the members with, that are participating within that team. And I can see the various other uh, aspects of that team. So the various sub channels and some of the settings that go with it. If I go back to members and click on add member here, you'll see I can start to uh, add people into this team. Uh, and that can either be from my organization. So I can start typing somebody's name and you'll see it will do a query in my organization and pull back that person's name. Um, or I can start to uh, add somebody else from an external organization. So you see, as I start to type somebody's name from an external organization, you'll see that it gives me this cue that if I were to add that person, it would add them uh, as a guest. And that changes the uh, rights that they have within this team. OK, so let's have a look at chat. So what I'm going to do now is just jump onto the uh, on the chat tab and you'll see I have um, a couple of tabs, uh, a couple of chats that are going on at the moment. So um, this one here between Alex, Johanna and Lee uh, is a, a conversation about uh, some of the current process, process items that we're working on. Uh, and you can see that uh, Lee is currently typing uh, and asking me some questions about that particular topic. Um, what I can also do with this uh, with this group of people, so with it, with Alex, Johanna, and Lee, uh, is I can start uh, a voice call if I wanted to. Uh, I could also start a video call, although because I'm doing this from the browser-based client, uh, I can't directly do a video call from here. Uh, but if I did that from the Windows-based client, uh, I could have a, a video call with uh, with each of these people. Okay. One other thing I can do is I can add people into this chat. So we've got Alex, Johanna and Lee at the moment. Uh, and in the same way as I did with um, the channel, I could start to add um, somebody from my organization. So maybe I wanted to add Nesta or um, Miriam. And you'll see, I just have to start typing their name and it's going to do a query against my organization and find those people. Uh, once I've done that, I can then add that person to the chat and I can decide whether to include the past chat history uh, or if there's something that I want that person not to see, I can uh, choose not to include that history. Okay, um, let's jump and have a look at channel conversations. So um, I'm going to click back on Teams in my left hand navigation and I'm then going to have a, a click on uh, the design channel, if I can see it, there it is, the design channel underneath my X1050 launch team. 
And what we can do here is I can start to show you uh, this persisted chat. So within this channel, um, there has been chat going back over time over a number of weeks. Um, and I can scroll back in time and I can start to get a feel for what has been said recently within um, this channel. Uh, and potentially if I had been away on leave or something like that, I could actually go back in time and see any decisions that have been made um, whilst I've been away. But what I can also do is I can see uh, these little tabs over on the right hand side. So where I personally have been at mentioned in a, in a particular tab. So this is a this is um, some text that's come from Johanna. Um, and I've been at mentioned here, um, which probably means I need to do something uh, about this. If I scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see we've got another tag here, which is a, an important tag. So, uh, and this is something that I've posted uh, and I've said that this is important. So I need uh, for other people to, to see this. And this decorates that particular uh, comment from me with the red bar on the, on the left hand side and the exclamation mark on the right hand side. Okay, what else can I do? So if I uh, click on the dots up here, um, I can get a, a, an email address for this channel. So I can actually um, interact with this channel directly from um, my Outlook client uh, or from a mobile Outlook client, mobile email client if I want to, uh, and I can stay in the loop. Okay, let's have a look at the go-to-market plan. So I've gone to my go-to-market plan channel under the X1050 launch team. And what I want to do is have a look at, uh, have a look at what's been going on in here. So if I scroll up a little bit, I can see that Isaiah has actually at mentioned me in a particular comment and said that we need to do something. We need to approve the RFP by 4 p.m. So I need to get on that. Okay. What else can we do here? So if I have a look at, um, yeah, so I want to post a reply into here. Um, and what I want to do um, is say, uh, I need to at mention Alex. And you can see I can start typing. And again, it's done a query against my organization and found Alex Wilbur. So I've at mentioned Alex Wilbur. Uh, and I need to say, can I get your input on this? Um, but again, because that's because that's something important, what I want to do is actually make sure that he sees this. So I'm going to click on the exclamation mark, which sets this as important. You notice I could also uh, hit the key combination control shift and one if that's something that I do regularly. Um, and then I can send that uh, that message. And because it's been at mentioned, uh, Alex will get a notification uh, about this. OK. What I also want to do is praise the people within my uh, go-to-market channel uh, and tell them that they're all doing a good job. So what I want to do is scroll down to the bottom here uh, and I'm going to say, you guys are awesome, because of course they are. Um, but I want to bring this comment to life a little bit. So there are various ways I could do that. Um, I could add uh, an emoji. We have some, some nice animated GIFs and I can actually start to type up in here. And if I type AWE, I can start to uh, see some of the uh, uh, awesome uh, animated GIFs that I could add in there. Um, and I can also add uh, things like stickers as well. So if I click on the stickers, um, I get some stickers that I could add to that channel. And once I'm happy with that, I can post that to the channel. OK, what else can I do? Well, I might want to have a meeting with these with the people within this channel. So down at the bottom here, I have the meet now uh, icon. And if I click on that, um, that's going to allow me to uh, to, to, kick, to kick off a meeting. Um, so I can give this meeting a subject team meeting. I can click on either meet now if I want to talk to everybody instantly and I can choose whether I want my uh, video on or off. Or I can choose to schedule that meeting uh, for a later date and time um, if meeting right now is not quite appropriate. If I click on that schedule uh, item, I get uh, this view so I can actually schedule that 
at a time that's convenient for uh, for everybody. Uh, and once I'm happy with that, I can click on the schedule the meeting button, uh, and and that will then invite everyone to the meeting for that time. Okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, discard the changes there. So what else can we do within um, Teams? You will have seen the, uh, the tabs across the top here, uh, and they allow us to have various different uh, collections of items or apps that go along with this channel. So if I, I've clicked on the Files tab, uh, and that's given us a list of um, files that have been shared with the people in this channel, um, various uh, Office documents. Um, and these items are actually stored within uh, SharePoint, or <clears throat> they could be stored within another cloud storage uh, solution, but at the moment, these are all stored within SharePoint. Um, what else have we got up here? So if I have a look on the, the product launch event, um, you'll see this is, um, this is uh, taking advantage of Planner within Office 365, and this is giving me uh, a Kanban board of uh, various different uh, tasks that need to be done. Uh, and I can interact with this here, so I can add uh, a new task, which is, uh, I don't know, get some work done. <coughs> um, and I can set a due date for these things, so I can say that has to be done by uh, tomorrow, and I can assign this to somebody to actually uh, get the work done. So I think uh, Johanna needs to do that, and maybe Nesta needs to assist as well. Once I'm happy with that, I can click on Add Task, and straight away that has created uh, the task within that plan. And if I scroll down in here uh, and I know that something has, ha has, has finished, uh, I can actually move this across to uh, one of the other uh, columns within the Kanban board. Um, and if, if that activity is actually completed, I can complete the task and that will hide down at the bottom there. So that's Planner, another aspect of Office 365 um, shown within um, Teams. If I click on the go to market plan, this is actually uh, a PowerPoint presentation, uh, which is rendered within uh, within my channel there. Um, and I can inter interact with this presentation, so I can scroll through the various different, uh, excuse me, slides within it. And if I really want to, I could uh, edit this presentation, and I can either edit that uh, within the Teams client, I can edit it in the full PowerPoint client and, client and get some of the benefits of the rich experience there, or I can edit that in, in PowerPoint online if I wanted to. And I can also download that if, uh, if I need to have that locally on my machine offline. <clears throat> what else have we got? So if I move across to uh, the Power BI tab up here, um, so this is showing me a Power BI dashboard uh, within the context of my channel in, within my team. Uh, and this is a fully interactive Power BI dashboard, so I can start to drill down on the various aspects of this and see um, see the numbers for um, for that item. I can also choose a, a particular part of this dashboard, and I can choose to uh, export that data. Uh, and if I do that, you'll see it will give me the data in a, a, an Excel uh, spreadsheet. What else can I do? So I could add uh, a, a wiki to my um, channel within that team and so a wiki would allow me to sort of store some uh, persisted information about that uh, channel so maybe that was uh, in this case who our uh, lead is for the go to market info um, but I could add various other pieces of information in there what other tabs can I add well if I if I click on the plus button up here um, you'll see there's a whole number of, uh, of apps and tabs that I could add to uh, my channel um, the, the, the group up at the top here are um, the ones that it's suggesting for my channel. So I've got uh, uh, Excel, I've got Planner, Power BI that we've uh, had a look at. Uh, I could also add a video from the stream uh, part of Office 365, uh, and I could add various other aspects in here. If I scroll down a little bit, I could add a, a survey monkey uh, if I needed to, to start to poll people on uh, what they think about this team, and there are various other parts of integration that I can add. Okay, so um, that's interesting, but how else can this interact with the world? So if I click on the web and social trends um, channel, uh, you'll see that this is pulling in information from uh, an RSS feed. Um, how do we go about doing that? So if I click on the ellipsis next to the, uh, next to the channel there, and then click on connectors, 
this will give me a list of ver uh, various connectors that I can uh, add to this um, channel. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you see there's, there's a whole uh, uh, collection of uh, connectors that I can add here, Twitter being one of those. So uh, for example, if my, um, if my uh, X1050 launch was starting to trend on Twitter, then I could monitor uh, the sentiments that are coming in there and I could start to uh, understand how uh, the Twitter sphere is, uh, is viewing my launch. Uh, and there are, uh, I think there are approximately 200 uh, connectors and, and apps that we could add in here. So there are, uh, there's a vast number of, uh, of options here and these are growing, um, growing all the time. <clears throat> okay, so what else can we what else can we do with uh, with Teams? This is something that's relatively new, has just come into um, Microsoft Teams, and that is um, slash command. So up in the top here, I get uh, I can actually uh, start to type anything, and this will do a search across Teams. Um, but there are a new set of commands called slash commands, which allow me to quickly navigate around the Teams. Uh, experience. So uh, the first few are at the top here, available down to uh, do not disturb, uh, allow me to set my um, status, my presence status, so that other people know uh, whether I can be disturbed or not. Uh, I can go to files, I can join a particular team, I can see my app mentions, um, and I can also see what's new. So that, this is handy to understand uh, the new features that are coming out in Teams. And you'll see with the 8th of February update, uh, we had the ability for anonymous people to join, uh, app mentions in chats, we can mute a chat, et cetera. And this gives us a list of various other uh, release notes that have happened. But what else can I do with this? So um, there's a new uh, chatbot which has been uh, created called the Who. Uh, chatbot and if I type slash who I can get access to that and I can start to ask questions about people uh, within my organization so if I start to type Nesta uh, and press enter you'll see the chatbot will respond with uh, a contact card for Nesta so I can instantly start to communicate with that person I can launch a call have a video conversation um, I can see who he works with who his mess who his manager is uh, I can send him an email, see what he looks like, see his presence, see if he's online or not. Um, I say I can browse the organization so I can see that Nesta's manager is Patty, the CEO. What else can I do? So if I start to type in um, who is Lee, you'll see the chat, the who bot is coming back uh, as soon as I can log in. Uh, it's going to come back with uh, a contact card for uh, Lee. There we go go there we go so there's Lee and that's the, the, the chat card for uh, for Lee right there and I can click on the organization uh, tab there and that will give me uh, an overview of where Lee sits within the organization of the typical org chart so I can see that Grady and uh, Jordan Lydia etc uh, report into Lee and if I scroll up uh, Lee reports into Patty from there what else can I do so I can start a conversation with Lee a direct conversation with Lee. I can see the files that Lee uh, has been working on uh, and I can also start to see uh, Lee's activity as well. Okay and I can now see that, uh, that Lee's presence uh, has turned to green because Lee uh, is available and online. So let me just say hi to Lee. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, so there we go, we can see that Lee has responded there. Perfect. Um, so this is a really helpful way of me actually trying to keep up to date with what's going on uh, within Teams. So if I can, I can type slash uh, unread and that's going to take me to my activity feed which shows me uh, things that uh, have happened uh, around me within Teams. Uh, and there are various other commands that I can type. So I'd, I would advise you to have a look at that search box and uh, uh, press the uh, forward slash button and see the various different commands that I can uh, that I can issue there. So let's have a look at. Uh, <clears throat> it says it's getting my unread feed ready, uh, and clearly I'm uh, up to date because there's nothing uh, unread there. Okay, so uh, that was a an overview of Teams. Um, what I'm going to do now is just jump back to my uh, slides uh, and let's have a look at how to uh, successfully launch uh, teams within your organization. Um, 
So Microsoft to put together uh, a microsite called successwithteams.com and that brings together uh, a whole host of helpful information on how to actually uh, successfully launch teams within your organization, how to get started, uh, having a look at adoption and change management, um, and then it also leads on to various templates for communications that you can send out, so email templates, posters, that kind of thing. And so I would highly recommend that if you're considering launching teams within your organization that you have uh, a look at this site uh, before you start that journey, so successwithteams.com. <clears throat> and then if we have a look at how to um, launch Microsoft Teams, so um, there's a, a success kit that Microsoft have made available. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, this contains various templates for things like announcements, countdowns, posters, uh, and then some guides for admins and, and team leaders as well. Um, by the way, I will share the uh, slide deck after this um, webinar, so um, you'll have that URL available. And then if we have a look at some of the key tasks that we need to go through, um, so most importantly, we need to understand our stakeholders and audiences and make sure um, we're engaging with those people at the right time and we're empowering those people to uh, start to use Teams. We also need to make sure that we've um, that we've designed the adoption campaign and, and we have uh, driven the initial awareness, hopefully created a bit of desire about um, starting to use Teams, giving people knowledge of how it can actually be used, uh, making sure people have the ability to use it and then actually reinforcing um, why it's good to use Teams. It's also worthwhile trying to build a champion program to make sure uh, that we have key people within the organization that can start to uh, speak positively about Teams and actually share the benefits of Teams with their peers. Uh, and then, as ever, it's always good to have uh, a way of collating feedback and understanding uh, what's working and what's not working and where we need to potentially uh, change tack. So, uh, just diving into that a little more deeply, uh, we need to understand who our executive sponsors are uh, and the messaging about uh, why we should be using Teams should be coming from our executive sponsors. Uh, and again, we need to have our champions network so that they can help to speak positively about uh, Teams and help to start um, people making the adjustment to, to using Teams. Uh, and as I said, building a champion program. Um, so it's it's important to, um, as I say, make sure that make sure people with that, across the business uh, know about uh, Microsoft Teams, know about how to use it, and know about how to uh, generate interest with Teams. So, uh, creating that enthusiasm around the business is important. Um, trying to make sure we're in influencing people uh, and showing people how they can work with Teams and how that can make their day-to-day uh, -day work life better. Okay, so. A brief summary of what we've looked at today before we move on to um, some of the uh, licensing aspects here. So I started off by showing how we had a, how we could start a day with Office 365, showing um, Outlook uh, on the web and how that can actually uh, help us to um, communicate during the day and how it can help us help to protect us from malicious attacks. We had a quick look at uh, Yammer and how that's targeted for uh, communication across the organization um, for things like communities of practice. We've looked at Teams and how that can help us to communicate within uh, smaller groups of people, uh, teams that, of collaborators that are working together, uh, and then had a brief look at how, to, how best to launch Teams within the organization. So, um, just moving on to uh, the next slide, and I'll hand over to um, Cassie.
Thank you, James. Um, yeah, just before I hand you over to Fabian, who's going to run through the licensing, I uh, just, just want to let you know we've got a workshop on the 27th of March. We'll be holding that at the Ned Hotel in London. Um, it's basically going to be a bit more of a deeper dive into what we've touched on today on the webinar. So today's just kind of giving you a bit of a taster and we'll go, have lots of, sort of live demonstrations on the day. Um, if you are interested, um, then please um, make a note at the, um, on the survey at the end of the webinar and I I can um, send out a registration link for you to register. I'm just going to hand you over to Fabienne, who's now going to run through the licensing. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fabian, and today I'll talk about the licensing for Microsoft 365 and Office 365. So Office 365 and Microsoft 365 are licensed on a per user um, licensing model and always on a subscription basis. That will allow us to pay for what we use, um, pay only for what you use by reducing licenses as needed, especially in more flexible agreement like the uh, Microsoft Cloud Agreement that will allow you to reduce numbers on a monthly basis. In other agreements such as the Enterprise Agreement, these numbers can be reduced on the anniversary. Um, and then in EAs, when you purchase cloud licensing, it also means that the agreement um, no longer needs to be company-wide, which means that qualified devices and qualified users no longer need to be counted. Now, all of the collaboration products that we've been talking about today, um, so Yammer, Teams, uh, but also um, Exchange, uh, Outlook, and, um, and SharePoint are all available in Office 365. You have four editions of the Office 365 suites, F1 for uh, desk class workers, or as Microsoft call them, first line workers. So a user that doesn't normally use a computer every day. E1 with higher functionality and a bigger mailbox. E3 for your power users, um, which includes a local copy of Office. And then E5 with additional voice analytics and security features, such as um, things like Power BI that we've seen today and the security features within Office 365. Now, um, looking at purchasing Office 365, you can buy it as a standalone license, like we've seen the um, F1, E1, E3, and E5 suites. But you can also um, purchase it um, as a suite called Microsoft 365 if you're looking at the rest of your estate. So if you're also looking at Windows and you're also looking at your infrastructure and identity, then you can buy that as Microsoft 365. And that gives you a saving compared to buying the components. And that suite includes Office 365, Enterprise Mobility and Security and Windows per user. Again, you have uh, different editions available, Microsoft 365 F1, E3, and E5. Now, if we're looking at uh, Microsoft 365 E3 and E5, which include the Office 365 E3 and E5, um, you will also have additional licensing benefits compared to buying the components. So you'll be able, for example, to downgrade Office if you're renewing your software assurance on Office from a previous agreement. And you'll also be able to install an unlimited number of instances of Exchange, Skype for Business and SharePoint service if you're still running a bit of a hybrid environment. And then you also have the um, uh, Microsoft 365 F1 uh, suite, which um, does not provide the hybrid use benefits. And it has limited features, but a, basic, but a better price point. So you still have um, Office 365 F1, which means you still have all the Teams and Yammer and SharePoint and Exchange Online. That's all included. Um, and Office Online as well. Uh, but you do have some um, limitation. Um, so you also have EMS, Enterprise Mobility and Security, and uh, Windows 10, Enterprise E3. Uh, but you will have some limitation um, where System Center, Endpoint Protection, um, Azure Information Protection, um, 
EM, uh, sorry, MIM CALs and RMS CALs are not available. Um, and there's also some limitations on Windows 10 licenses that you can see on the slide here, um, such as downgrades rights and virtualization rights. And then here you can see an overview of um, all of the features, all of the services that are available in all the Microsoft 365 suites. So that's F1, E3, and E5, um, with um, an example price here as well. Um, and I, I won't go through that in detail, but you'll get the slides after this call, so you can um, have a look at that as well. And then one thing to note as well with Microsoft 365, whether it's E3 or E5, or if you buy for 365 E1 as a standalone component, not only do you get access to um, the cloud services, you also get access to the on-premises CALs. So Office 365 will give you Exchange, Skype for Business and SharePoint CALs. As I said, if you're still running a, a, a hybrid environment here, and then the Enterprise Mobility and Security part of Microsoft 365 also give you um, the access to the on-premises scale. So if you're still running a, an on-premises Active Directory, for example, and you have Microsoft 365, then you don't need to purchase scales. And then finally, if you um, currently have Microsoft 365 or Office 365, you have access to all these services already. Um, but if you're currently licensed with on-premises services um, and you're looking to start using online services, start using Yammer and Team and Exchange Online, um, you can do so and you have discounts available. For example, if you're licensed with a core Cal or enterprise Cal suite with software assurance, um, you can get what Microsoft called an Office 365 E1 add-on um, and that gives you a discount on the online service with the same features um, as you're paying with equivalent licenses with software assurance on premises again if you're looking for office 365 e3 or e5 you have core cal and office with sa again you can get that discount as well and that's all for me Thank you, Fabian. Um, we're just going to have a very quick Q&A. So um, if you do have any questions about anything that you've heard today, please submit them via the questions box on the right hand side of the screen. Um, I'll just have a quick look now to see if we do have any. So um, someone has asked, what is the maximum number of attendees allowed for a meeting held within Teams? James, if, um, if you could um, help with that one. So, yeah, thank you. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, basically, the, the maximum number of uh, people that you can have within uh, a channel uh, has increased recently from 999 up to 2,500. Um, so, um, and that includes internal and external members as well. Um, so that, that's within a channel within a team uh, and you can uh, start a meeting uh, with with those people. Um, yeah, yeah um, Great. Um, someone else has asked, will Microsoft Teams be available for Office 365 uh, business subscribers? Great question. So, um, uh, Teams is available for Office 365 uh, subscriptions, including uh, First Line, so uh, the F1 uh, subscription, uh, and then also um, the E subscription, so E1, E3, uh, and E5, uh, and it's available for uh, a number of the other uh, subscriptions as well. Great. Um, okay, we've got another. Um, can Teams be used to access files still stored on-prem, for example, file servers? Uh, that's a, a great question. That might I might need to actually uh, take that one offline and get back to you later. Um, there, in, in in general, across Office 365, there are um, uh, on-prem data access gateways which allow you to uh, to pull things back from uh, on-premise world to uh, to the online world. Uh, and I believe there's a connector that would allow you to do that. Um, beyond that, of course. Um, it might be worth looking at whether there's an option to migrate um, though that content from your local network file shares uh, up to uh, either OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online, depending on uh, the use case there. Great. Um, someone has also asked, um, do you know how the org chart is managed within Teams? <laughs> okay, so that's 
Great question. It's pulling that information back from um, the Office Graph, which sits underneath uh, Office 365 and, uh, and, and, and Delve. That information uh, is populated from a uh, connection to Azure Active Directory, um, which pulls that information back from uh, hopefully from uh, your Active Directory. Um, so the, the, the structure, the org structure is pulled back that way. And that's how that's uh, shown uh, within Delve and within uh, the Who bot that I showed earlier. Perfect. Um, Bradley has asked, so can I make a channel for each and every client I work with and discuss things with them there? Uh, yes, I mean, it would be worth understanding the limitations. So there's a, a limit of 100 channels per team. Um, so if you work with less than 100 clients, then that might be uh, a possibility. Um, you, you would also want to analyze if that's uh, an appropriate um, thing to do if you wanted to have external users um, to understand what each of those external users can see across those channels. Um, you wouldn't want to get any uh, information leaking between uh, the, the different uh, clients, I would assume, but um, potentially uh, you could do that. Um, I would make sure that you've uh, thought through all the permutations and understood uh, the limitations there though. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I think we've got time for one more question. Um. Someone's asked, do you recommend using Teams with guest or external users, or are there security risks for data, for example, with GDPR coming in? Yeah. It's a it's a it's a great question. Um. I think one of the things that Teams was was designed for is to is to remove friction and help people collaborate. Um, effectively across the organization and also beyond. Um, it, it really does depend on the type of information that you're likely to uh, be sharing within Teams um, and, and given uh, that you can share uh, Word documents, PowerPoint decks, Excel spreadsheets, that kind of thing, um, there's a the potential for a lot of information to then be available to people outside of your organization. So from uh, a GDPR perspective that may not be uh, what you want to do. Having said that, um, it's not anonymous external users, they are still uh, authenticated, so you, you do know who has access to what um, from a GDPR standpoint. Um, that may well be uh, enough to satisfy that requirement, but um, as with everything relating to GDPR, um, it's worth uh, assessing that, assessing the risks and understanding uh, how you're exposed. Great, perfect. Um, so, uh, the, Mirage, you've got um, a lot of questions. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll probably come back to you directly if that's okay. Um, anybody else, if you have any questions at a later date, please feel free to. You, you can reach out to your Bytes account manager, or you can email tell me more at Bytes, and we'll get the the responses over to you um, as soon as we can. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on the webinar today. Fabian, thank you for your time. James, thank you for yours. Um, just as a reminder, we will uh, distribute out a copy of the recording for today's webinar in case you've missed anything and the slides will also be distributed. There's a short survey at the end of the webinar so if you could just fill that in that'd be much appreciated. Thank you everybody for your time. Thanks James.